Hey, what's up? Jason here. If you've ever been building a Unity game and you wanted your enemies or things that are dying to die more naturally, maybe use physics, a ragdoll is probably what you want. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to set that up in a really quick, really easy way that's completely free. Here I've got a bunch of robots running around and I've set it up so that I can click and make them fall into their ragdoll mode. I think one of them actually just fell off the cliff there. And I can click again to reset them and we can do it again. You can kind of watch as they appear semi-natural. Again, that guy fell off right there and keep clicking and just watching them fall over and over. So how do we set this up? Well, let's get started. But uh, actually, before we do, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, share with all your friends. It really does help just get the word out and let more people see the stuff. And also, very special thanks to everybody on Patreon. You guys are awesome. Really appreciate it. All right, now let's get started. <laughs> All right, to show you how to set this all up, first thing we want to do is go into an empty scene and create a ground. So I'm going to go to game object, go to 3D and create a cube, and I'll set this to 20 on the X, 0.1 on the Y, and 20 on the Z. This way we just have a big ground surface that we can uh, have our guy fall down on. Next we need to grab our robot, so go to my robot folder here, and I've got a robot model that I can just drop right out onto the scene. You can see he's a little bit gray because his material's not assigned, so I'm going to expand him out. Select all of the renderers. He's actually got a lot of them. Select them all and assign this robot material to the material section. If this is collapsed, by the way, you can hover over it and it'll expand like uh, there when it's collapsed. You can do this right here and it'll expand and drop it in just in case anybody happens to be following along. So now I've got the robot there. By the way, if you want to follow along, I'll put the source project down below so you can grab it. So we've got a robot there and we want him to run around. So I'm going to add on this animator that I've got. This robot animator just puts him into a run mode. So let's hit play again. Just watch him. Oh, whoop. my camera's in the wrong spot. Let's move my main camera up here to look at this robot. Now we'll hit play. And we should see him running in place. Cool. That's good, but I want him actually moving around so that when he falls down, it looks cool. The next thing I want to do is drop on this random roam script. So I'll take this and just drop it right onto my robot. I didn't have him selected, so I dropped it onto the hierarchy side. But I'll select him now, and we should see it here. This random roam script, it actually just looks for a nav mesh agent, picks a random spot, and then sets the nav mesh agent to go to that spot. So we're going to need a nav mesh agent as well. So I'll hit add component and add a nav mesh agent. Now I want to be clear, you don't need the nav mesh agent or this roaming stuff for a ragdoll necessarily. It just helps with the demonstration so that we have him actually moving around, have some velocity and some way to fall that makes sense instead of him just falling flat down every time. Now let's open up that random roam script because I just want to show you what it looks like and show you how simple it is. Here we go, we'll zoom right in. Uh, the first thing we do is, in Awake, we grab the nav mesh agent and cache it. That's just good practice because we're going to be accessing it a lot. Then in Update, we see if the nav mesh agent is enabled. If it's not enabled, we don't do anything. We just bail out. Otherwise, we check to see if we have a path. If we don't have a path or we're within one meter, that's this remaining distance check, if we're within one meter of our destination, then we just choose a new position. Choosing a new position is as simple as picking a random offset that is a random vector of a x that's negative 10 to positive 10 and a z that's negative 10 to positive 10 and a zero on the y. So we'll go whatever around 10 meters in any direction basically. And then we add that desk to our position as the destination and we set that as the nav mesh destination. So that's what makes them run around. Let's just watch that in action. Watch when I hit play though. Nothing's going to happen. Look at that. Nothing happened. The reason for that, and I wanted to show it, is that we have to actually have a nav mesh available. You can see a little message here, set destination only works if there's been a nav mesh, or if the agent is placed on a nav mesh. So we'll go to the navigation tab. So select the cube, and we go to the navigation tab. If you don't see that, it's under a window, and then, oh goodness, it's moved around a lot, but it's probably an AI. Yep, window AI navigation. Click on that, you'll get this window. And then we'll go to the object section with the cube selected. Check that navigation static, go back over to bake, and click the bake button. And it's going to say, hey, we need to save our scene. Not a problem. I'll name this uh, robots. And we'll get a little blue square here. That is the navigation area. That's where our NPC can actually walk around. So now if I hit play, we should see our robot running around. There we go. We're almost there. We're almost to the rigid body and the ragdoll. The next step is to actually split this robot out just a little bit. Now in almost every project that I have, 
the actual character logic and the visuals from the character are separated. So our animator or our nav mesh agent, our random roam script at least, would be very separated out from our robot. So to do that, we go to our robot, right click, and create an empty child. Now we have this empty game object that's a child of the robot. I'm going to take it and drag it right out here. The only reason I did that is so that it's the exact same position as this robot, because now I'm going to take this robot and make it a child of that game object. So now I've essentially inverted the hierarchy here. You could do this a bunch of different ways. That's just the way that I like to do it. And I'll rename this game object to robot. I'm going to go over to the rigged one here. This is the model that we have. And I'm going to select the nav mesh agent, click, and just drag it and see if I can move it over to the robot. Ah, it didn't go. Sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. I'm just going to right click and remove it. And I'll remove the random roam here. And we'll just go over to the robot and add the nav mesh agent in the random roam script. Now everything should still work the same if I hit play. I've got a character, but now the model part here, the visual, is totally separated out. And there's a very important reason for that, because we need two of these. So I'm going to rename this. I'm going to select it, hit F2, and just type in model. This will be our character model, like the visual animated one. And uh, in fact, let's name it animated model. And then I'm going to duplicate it, just Control or Command D to duplicate it. And I'm going to click on it and name this ragdoll. Yeah, you might be wondering, like, this isn't actually a ragdoll. Why are you naming it ragdoll? Because we're about to turn it into one. So with the ragdoll selected, go over here and remove the animator because we don't need an animator on our ragdoll. In fact, it would be pretty problematic if we had one there. And then we need to go to Game Object, 3D Object, and the part that you've been waiting for, the part you came here for, click on this ragdoll button. This is going to bring up a nice new window that allows us to, well, forces us to go put in a bunch of transforms. Now to do that, we're going to expand out the ragdoll, but I don't want to just click and expand out one at a time. I'm going to hold Alt and click right here, and it'll expand out the entire hierarchy of the skeleton. So here, this is under BIP001. Depending on your character, it's going to have some sort of a setup where you have the, the animated bones here, and then probably just one renderer. This character just happens to not be combined yet and has a bunch of them. But you may have multiple renders and then some sort of a skeleton. So just expand out the skeleton. You should th see things that look like pelvis, spine, thigh, arms, and all that. And they should kind of line up with what's in here. So the first thing we need is the pelvis. In fact, if I click here, you can see there it is. It's right there. It's actually at the right spot in its pelvis. I can just drag it right onto this pelvis spot. Next, I need the hips. But if I look around, like, see, like, I don't have one that says hips. And even if I did, I still want to click on it to check. So what I do is kind of click through and find the one that's closest. And it's going to be here. If I zoom in a little bit, you can see it's actually named thigh here. Part of that is just that animators and artists tend to name things differently. They don't all match. And sometimes you just kind of, kind of click around and figure out which one's the right one. So here we've got the thigh. And it goes right in hips. And now you may guess that the next one down is knee, and we don't have knee, but calf is the closest thing. And in fact, it's actually the next thing down in the hierarchy. And then we go to foot down here, the next one below that. So it's so thigh, calf, foot, or whatever, hips, knee, foot. Then we got to do the same for the right. Notice the L there. That's important because that was the left side. We got to do the same for the right side. So go right, right calf, and the right foot there. Then we got to match that for the upper stuff. So we've got the arms. So let's see, left arm, let's find that. It's probably going to be this left upper arm. Yep, there we go, that looks right. So we'll take left upper arm, drop that there, and then forearm will go where elbow is. And I'm sure if I select that, see it looks like it's at the elbow. And then we do the same for the um, right side. We get right upper arm, right elbow. Then we need middle spine, which I believe was right up here. So I want to click to make sure that it's the right one. That looks right. And then head. So if we check head. Oh, that looks good. Or it could be that one. I think we'll go with this one right here. That looks right. And then I hit create. So once all of these are assigned and correct, I should be able to hit create. And notice that a little collider appeared on his head. In fact, a joint appeared and a rigid body. And that happened all the way along. So all of the parts that I had assigned now have joints and rigid bodies and colliders that are all hooked up. In fact, if I click on the parent here, I can see the ragdoll setup. So if I hit play, well, let's see what happens. I've got a ragdoll kind of falling around and being drug around by the character. 
not exactly what we want, but we've got the idea, right? At least now we have a ragdoll. In fact, if I just duplicate this ragdoll and drag it out of that hierarchy here, let's collapse that down. So I've got another ragdoll here, and I just move this over here. We should see this guy just kind of fall down like you would expect a ragdoll to do. There we go. It goes bloop. Perfect. So now we want that animation to be hooked up to the ragdoll so that when he falls down dying, he actually looks right and doesn't just kind of stand still and flop over. So let's go to the next step, which is adding in our robot script. So I'm going to first let's delete this extra ragdoll. And I'm going to take the robot script and I'm just going to assign it to this robot. So here's the robot. We'll drop it on. And don't worry, I'm going to go through all of the code and show exactly how it works and what we're doing in here. So we've got a couple fields on here. We have a ragdoll field, an animated model, and a nav mesh agent. Should be pretty easy to find these, the nav mesh agents right here. And again, this isn't necessarily required. If you want to do one without a nav mesh, don't worry, you'll see how easy it is to change it. And then we've got the animated model. I'll assign that right here. And the ragdoll from the other child right here. So we've assigned the animated model and the ragdoll right here. And well, let's, let's hit play, watch it real quick, and then look at the code. So we hit play, we run around, I click, and he falls and dies. Click, falls and dies, and every time I click, it's just set up to make him reset, just so that it'd be easy to show it a bunch of times. All right, so that works, let's look at the code. So here we go, we've got a robot script, we'll zoom it in, and we have our three fields, the ragdoll, the animated model, and the nav mesh agent, those are the three that we assigned. We also have a single bool here for whether or not they're dead, Again, if you don't want to recycle them and reuse them, you won't need this, but I wanted to, so I put it in. Then in Awake, we grab the ragdoll and we set it to not active. So that's why when we start playing, we don't see a ragdoll being run, running around with a watch. Let's hit play and you should see the ragdoll. Oh, whoops. Let's turn off maximize on play. So right here, this little button on the game view. Turn that off and then I can kind of flip back and forth between the scene view and the game view easily. But you can see the ragdoll is uh, off as soon as we started playing. All right, back to the code. So in our update, we checked to see if fire one was pressed and we toggled dead. Fire one's just left click. Um, and I also added a context menu option for it. We don't necessarily need that. This is the part that you care about though. Right here, if dead, this is really the only important part. Everything else is just for resetting it. So if they're dead, the first time we click, we call this copy transform data and we pass in the animated models transform and the ragdolls transform plus the nav mesh agent's velocity. Um, I'll look at that code in one second, but first we also turn off the ragdoll, or turn on the ragdoll, sorry. We turn on the ragdoll and turn off the animated model and we turn off the nav mesh agent. So we're gonna copy all of the transform data, toggle off the ragdoll, toggle, or toggle on the ragdoll, toggle off the model and toggle off the agent so that it's all in ragdoll mode. So let's look at the copy transform data. This is basically doing all of the work. So we take the source transform, the destination transform, or this is the animated model right now and the ragdoll, and we pass in a velocity, which is just the um, nav mesh agent's velocity. So we have like our, kind of our forward direction, the way that we're moving. Um, we do a quick check here to see if the child count doesn't match the destination count. In our case though, because our copy here, our ragdoll is just a direct copy of the animated model, it's going to match every time. So we don't have to worry about it. If we change things though, if we started dropping other things in underneath the ragdoll or the animated model and changing the hierarchies, this setup wouldn't necessarily work. And that's mostly just because I wanted to keep it really simple and just have it match one for one because that's what I do most of the time. We could always adjust this if we wanted to. So we check that child count and then if they do match, which they do, we loop through and we get the source child transform, we get the destination transform, so we're getting the first transform on the source, the first one on the child, and then we're setting the position of the destination to the source, setting the rotation of the destination one to the source. And then we get the rigid body if it has one, we set the velocity as well. The rigid body should be there, it should always have one, but we just wanna do a double check and make sure that there is one. Um, that's pretty much it. And then we, well, we make it recursive. So we call again on this transform, this child transform, and we do the same thing. We copy all of those children over. So here we're essentially copying the transform position and rotation of this and all of these. Then we go down into these children and these children and so on, all the way over until they're into our ragdoll. And that's all there is to it. That just kind of makes it work. Now to invert it, 
Here, let's go back to the code one more time. Oh, to invert it, we're just calling. Oh, actually, we're not even doing it. I was calling copy transform data in the reverse direction. You could do that, and you can animate them playing a get up animation or something. You don't want to, if you want to make them come back to life, you don't want to have them uh, get up and snap directly into the animation, which is kind of what I'm doing right now. You'd want to go copy that over and then do play a get up or stand up animation that you can find those for free online or in asset packs everywhere. Anyway, I hope this is kind of helpful and just shows how you can set up ragdolls and how simple it is to get going with it. Hopefully it wasn't too long. I really wanted to make sure that everybody could follow along and kind of recreate everything step by step and I didn't miss anything. Um, if you like this kind of video, again, please make sure that you share it with people, like it, subscribe, all that stuff really helps just get the word out. And um, thanks again. Bye.